Hi, welcome to Sweatpixel Live. My name is Adam Hamlin. I'm your Sweatpixel, and we'd like to thank XIT404. That's XIT404 for um, sponsoring this episode. They do a range of accessories, zoom knobs, dials, ports, and accessories for um, underwater images. And um, please head on over to XIT404. That's as, as it sounds, XIT404.com to check out what they do. Um, I'm very happy to be joined by our resident expert, Alex Mustard. Good morning, Alex. Hi, Adam. Um, although I have to say I'm not so much of an expert on today's topic because I was wanting to ask you to, to share some of your knowledge of on lithium batteries. Okay. Because although I use them, I always feel I don't have a particularly deep understanding of maybe the best way to care for them, exactly, you know, what are the, 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 the strengths and weaknesses of them as batteries. And yeah. actually, the reason I wanted to ask you this topic is actually you helped me out the other week in that I had a really nice focus light that I, I really enjoy using, but the battery charger for it had broken. Yeah. And I was sort of really down that I wasn't, I had this kind of very specific battery and, you know, it was, had the brand name of the focus light on it. And I was like, oh gosh, am I going to find another one of these batteries and a charger? And this model is now discontinued. And, and the first thing you told me is that maybe the battery would have a USB plug in it itself. And it did. So I can actually just charge the battery direct from a USB cable, which is yep. super convenient. I've been carrying this plastic charger around the world with me, which is now broken. But the, the, the USB chargers solve that problem. But you yep. also pointed out to me that I could just buy more batteries. And I was like, but don't they have to have the name of the, the focus light on them? And actually, what I learned from you was that these batteries, they do come in standard sizes. Yep. And, you know, you know, as, as long as you, you, know, you check your sizing... You can yep. buy more for, for, for amounts of money that underwater photographers never get to spend. And by that, I mean very, very small amounts of money. I was able to suddenly have a whole series of spare batteries for this, a nice new charger for the for the wall. And yeah, and and the yeah, the ability now to suddenly really use my my favorite focus light all the time rather than having to meter out the battery usage. Yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, lithium lithium batteries. We, we know this are are here to stay. You know, they're going to continue being used by more and more manufacturers. We've we've already seen the first strobe by um, Scuba Lamp um, have mm. now a, a produced strobe with lithium batteries. Um, and you know, it, and it's that's an got tremendous performance as a result. So yeah, I mean, you know, the traditional strobes are powered by either uh, nickel metal hydride, which is the you know any loop type batteries. Occasionally, some of the older strobes now. Um, are, are charged by nickel cadmium cells, um, and sometimes these are these are made by particular manufacturers into a battery pack. But ultimately, the chemistry, the battery inside them, is 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 the same thing. Um, and lithium obviously is an alternative to that, and it is much much more. Um, it, it can take it can store much much more energy for a given size. That's the short answer. Um, it's the same reason why your mobile phone, your laptop, your iPad, you know tablet all of these devices they're and all car, powered. Yeah. yeah yeah they're all powered by lithium lithium batteries and you know and that's 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 is, is for better for worse it's going to be the future i should point out as well that you know those of us and the majority of us with cameras the the um uh, nikon or canon or sony batteries they're lithium too you know so when you buy a, a nikon battery it's it's a it's a lithium battery um, um the there is a number of sort of fairly standard cell types, um, and, and I'm not absolutely 100 percent familiar with all the different types, but one called an 18650, so 18650 is a very common cell size. Um, I think what I what I found confusing is that I got you know double A, triple A, etc. was nice and easy, and yeah. then like some massive great long number was why yeah. I kind of just it felt felt to me they weren't these standardized sizes, which, which is why which, I was yeah, so pleased to find out there was. Yeah, which is and, and certainly things with USB charging, you know, there's quite a few of them now that offer USB charging. And that that for us as traveling photographers is fantastic. You know, you literally just plug plug them on into into USB and charge them up, which is great. Um by the way, Nikon now, so the newer, the very latest generation of Nikon camera batteries have a USB port on them as well, and you can charge them direct as well. So um mm. So, so if you buy a new, I think there's some of the new D850s are shipping with them now, and I'm sure the D6s and various. Mm. So, you know, the, this is a feature that's coming. Um, we need to temper some some of the enthusiasm for new battery technology um, 
with the fact that lithium is potentially fairly dangerous and there's been some some very tragic cases of, of lithium batteries and, and 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 the issue here is them catching fire um and if you puncture a lithium battery or possibly it's it's incorrectly set up it can catch fire it burns very hot it burns very intense um, and this is why certainly traveling with them for example can still be challenging is still challenging um, and we need to be aware of these things you know it's all well and good saying lithium's the future but we need to be aware of some of the drawbacks too um, and, and i mean you know I, I was just shouting about you know oh, it's great i was able to buy additional batteries for my 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 focus light yeah. but you push me towards particular brands because it's an area where maybe not everything on the market is as reputable and therefore with something that's potentially dangerous, you definitely want to be spending your money in the right area, particularly, you know, you know, because you're going to be charging it up a lot. You're going to be, you know, either in your own home or when you're traveling, you know, yeah. you, you don't want to introduce something that's a, a really you know serious risk. Yeah, yeah, and and the the you know the, there is a there is we, we've all done it. I'm sure you know we've we've gone to buy a camera battery and we've looked on choose your online vendor and we looked so we can buy one from Nikon for 50 pounds and we can buy one from somebody else who we don't really know for 20 pounds so why don't we buy the 20 pound one well actually there is a reason why the Nikon one's 50 pounds quite apart from the fact that it has a natty label on it that says Nikon you know you are inherently buying something that is probably reasonably well tested and, and reasonably safe now having said that there's an issue with counterfeiting you know that happens um, so we still need to go in with our with our eyes open. But in general, buying a brand name will probably guarantee. And and, and I'm afraid um, we all like a bargain. We're, we're all guilty of this. But um, th that very cheap battery alternative is probably a reason why it's very cheap. Um, so with lithium, for example, the battery I think I sent down to you was a Nightcore battery, Alex. And typically Nightcore have a, have a pretty good reputation in terms of safety, in terms mm -hmm. of longevity, you know, all that kind of stuff. They are more expensive. There's no doubt about it. You know, if you go onto Amazon and, and shop for lithium batteries and, and you look at the Nightcore ones, it'll cost you more than some of the other ones that are available. But I think maybe in terms of our safety and safety those around us, we should be prepared to pay possibly a little bit more for, for that kind of thing. I think that's uh, you know, an important, um, mm. important thing to bear in mind. So Another question I sort of had to you about them is that one thing I've heard about lithium batteries is, you know, as underwater photographers, we perhaps in more, in more normal times have periods of activity, periods of inactivity. Mm. And I've heard that with lithium batteries, the charge level you store them at actually really helps with the, the longevity if you are if they are out of action for a while. So actually, I mean, yes, it's a good point, Alex. And maybe we should compare this to some of the older batteries. So, so nickel cadmium batteries had a memory. So, so the idea here was that if you use them for a while um, and then um, didn't completely discharge them and then charged them up and you did that repeatedly, they start to lose capacity. So ni nickel cadmium batteries, the original kind of rechargeable batteries, like to be use them in your strobe till the strobe stops firing, charge them up. And if you did that every time, which of course no one does, that's the that's the best way of making sure that your your nickel cadmium. Oh, is it? Um, she's not very well at the moment, so I think oh, she needs a bit of a cuddle. Oh, she's very cute though. Um, the the so so yes, nickel cadmium batteries need that they they develop a memory, and that's a problem. Now, to be fair, nickel metal hydride don't. So you can you can recharge nickel metal hydride at any state of their of their charge no problem lithium battery uh, both of them like to be charged like to be stored fully charged um, okay so and, and in fact they they should be if you have this is probably good advice for people who aren't diving as much if you have nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride battery packs just sticking them on the charge once a month is a good thing to do and um, they will discharge slightly they won't take very long to charge up but that's a good thing mm. to do it helps it helps keep them in good condition um, lithium is the opposite. Lithium doesn't like being stored at full charge. So, so with lithium batteries, um, you, you can get some charges. I, I forget, but I think between 70 to 90 percent of full battery capacity is the optimum for storage. Now, you know, so so in in a situation like we're in at the moment, possibly not using them, discharge them a bit um, and store them away. It doesn't have to be that exact. But don't or try and avoid storing them fully charged, which is yeah, different to, to 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 the other battery chemistries we've used. Yeah. But um, say say I'm I, you know go for a dive, I run my batteries down lowish. Um, am I better to leave them low with lithium? I don't know if you know the answer to this, or 
charge them up. If I know, you know, if I've just done a dive there, say, you know, 30% left um, in, in them, should I leave it flat, low, low like that? Or should I charge it up? Or should I buy a smart charger that will charge it to a storage level? Ideal world, yes, the last by by so so big big scooter batteries DPVs. Um, they um, my my scooter battery actually has an option of being able to to charge it to either ninety percent or one hundred percent. And the idea being that for storage you charge it to ninety percent, um, but then you would you would only charge it to hundred percent before you plan to use it. Um, I think I think my temptation to answer your question, Alex, would be that I would tend to leave my lithium batteries um, what, after a day's diving. And assume, let's let's take a hypothetical example. I've been diving. I don't plan on diving for a week. Um, I would probably use my use my batteries and charge them the night before I go diving. Yeah. Does that make sense? Rather than yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. with 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 most batteries, what I do is I take them out of the camera, take them out of the strobe, and charge them. With lithium, I probably wouldn't, unless I plan to use them the next day. Obviously, that would be different. Um, and if they continue to use, just keep charging them definitely. Yeah. And then the other area that always concerns me a bit with with lithiums, um, and I know the rules do change a little bit, you know, regularly on it, is traveling with them because mm. you know the airlines always have you know big signs, no lithium, no lithium. But what they really mean, a battery, you know, a lot of what they don't like is much bigger batteries than we would ever use. And the rule that, I, as I understand it with the airlines, is they like all that lithium in your hand luggage, basically because of that fire risk. Yes. So, That's so, right. so, so, again, my understanding of it is, I mean, in general, camera batteries, um, I'm, I'm talking about still camera batteries, strobe batteries, those types of batteries, you're not going to have a problem in terms of battery capacity. Um, the limit's 100 watt hours, which is a pretty big battery. Now, to be fair, some of the big video systems, the Reds, the, the big Sony video systems, they're probably, well, they are getting up there. So so that would be an issue. And certainly if we're talking about DPVs or, or big torches, stuff like that, you could certainly bump into issues. But generally for still camera batteries and strobe batteries, those types of power, we're not going to bump into issues with capacity. Um, in general, my understanding of the problem with lithium is that the cargo holds have um, less sensitive fire detection suppression um, systems than they have in the cabin, um, not least of which right. with something starts burning in the cabin, they can smell it. You know, it's, no, uh, and people can uh, deal with it. Yeah, And people can deal with it. Um, so so um, the issue, obviously, of a lithium battery catching fire in, in, in the cargo hold would be that that theoretically could burn for quite a long time undetected and obviously cause some kind of catastrophic problem. Um, so the guidance is from is that basically lithium travels with you in in the in the in in your 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 um, carry on um, in your cabin baggage um, and um, you know there is there is also some discrepancies in that. Um, they're much more tolerant of lithium batteries in devices. So, so if you have a battery in a camera, that seems to be fine. But carrying batteries loose seems to present a much bigger challenge. And to some extent, you know, it, it seems to be getting sorted out. But there is definitely some, I don't know, misunderstanding, some sort of um, local variation in the way these rules are applied. So, so it's really important, I think, at this point, to talk to your your agent, talk to the people you're organising the trip through um, to find out exactly what the airline, the country you're flying to, um, what sort of um, guidance they're giving. I, I had a big problem. And we all it. know from travel that, you know, it can, unfortunately, despite all that best preparation, can come down to one individual on the day who wants to impose the rule. And I just think, I think it's something that we do all need to be aware of because, you know, it's clear that a lot of stuff has lithiums in. Yep. You know, and we're using it more and more and more and more. You know, um, also, it seems that that battery technology is very exciting in some of the more high performance items, particularly strobes. And, yep. you know, I can see us in, you know, five years time, there being lots of strobes around with with lithium batteries. Now we, we've got one, maybe 10 yep. years time. And both with cameras and strobes, as underwater photographers, we're unlikely to want to travel without spares for those bits. Yep. So and, and you know and therefore that lithium load that we're carrying is going to go up and it's it's yep. something that we need to um, but then also you know it, I guess it's going to become more widespread in everything and therefore easier to deal with. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know things will adapt and 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 improve and change. Um, 
you know, it's, it's a reality that, that we are going to see more and more of it around. So, so certainly they're going to have to, but, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, the individual on the day, I've, <laughs> I've had wonderful problems with lithium batteries, um, which have been tied down to individuals. Um, and, and, you know, it's just, you just got it. It's one of the, one of the joys of travel with lots of camera gear. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to those joys again, when we, Absolutely. when we're allowed yeah. to do that sort of thing again. It's, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking and I are both in the UK and we're not allowed to go anywhere really at the moment. So. Looking forward to dealing with stroppy customs. Because yeah, I'll that, be that's, like, oh, that's quite okay. something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a hard time, please. <laughs> Thank God I'm back. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So um, lithium batteries, a little bit of a kind of a little bit of a primer on them. Um, thank you, Alex, for pushing us in that direction. Um, no, thank you for the answers. It's um, uh, I can hear uh, it live, but yeah, I'll probably listen back to it as well just to make sure um um I, I you know got it all in i think it's also the sort of thing that it's the sort of knowledge that i tend to pick up in the field and yeah. because i've not been in the field with lots of photographers you know it's the sort of thing that you just you know it's camera room chat and yeah. i kind of really miss that because you know you're always absorbing stuff you know it's you know the knowledge got, that the two of us have accumulated it comes from somewhere and when and that got, route turned off we don't get it. it and it's such a diverse group of people you know often workshops you know we've got people that are engineers and and you know electric electromechanical engineers and you know and they know all about battery chemistry and, and you kind of you know, i don't know if you're osmos but i'm always i'm always fascinated by those conversations so so you extract bits from it and you're quite right you know at the moment we're not having those conversations and uh, so yeah it's um it, it'll be nice to be get back to it hopefully soon um crossing fingers right yeah um so thank you very much alex um nice to see you um, and yeah. um, um, I look forward to having another chat soon. Um, I'd like to thank XIT404 again for sponsoring this episode. We really appreciate the support. Um, thank you all for watching. I, I'm sure that this episode probably will um, produce some um, comments in the comment section. So please give your experiences or advice uh, about traveling with, with batteries, but obviously particularly lithium batteries in general. And please drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.